everybody welcome back to another episode of a gardener's journey homestead i am barbara i am so glad that you're joining me today and today is a lot of things right <laughs> so this video uh, we're going to be trying to pull um not pull out put down some more landscape fabric in the in-ground garden so that we can have more rows to plant i'll also show you progress of what we've already done um since the last video and then i'm gonna um take you guys along the journey with me today as we're out here working to put down even more landscape fabric so you see my husband behind me with the tractor he is going to um, bring the tractor back into the in-ground garden we have a space for the next row that we're about to plant that is has a lot of rocks in it and it has um, a lot of like mounded dirt like in one section and we know that that's gonna hold water so he is going to come with the tractor instead of him trying to rake it he was like hey I think it'll be easier for me to just back it up with the tractor with the scoop and move the water we're moving it this way so that when the when it rains it can kind of wash past the plants into the um, rest of the yard the rest of the grass so that's the first thing we're doing and we have to do that before we can plant a another row now if I'm being honest <laughs> if I'm being honest 100% am I overwhelmed I, I'm a little overwhelmed but we have a few hours today to try to get something done so that's what we're gonna try to focus on um, and get it done so let's go now we're about to that worked well with the tractor you can see it's much more smooth and now my husband's about to lay out the next piece of paper so I'm gonna jump in and help him and see what we can accomplish. guys so you saw footage of us laying down that row of paper and then stapling it down on the inside we were trying to make sure that it was um, straight so that we don't have it being crooked so we got that one piece down you probably saw me hammering hubby's back is is hurting so I kind of took the lead um, on hammering and was learning how to hammer I know you should say well Barbara what do you mean learning how to hammer y'all I, I told y'all hadn't done this before uh, so he was telling me where to hold the handle and kind of to step back and let the weight of the weighted hammerhead do the work. I know, y'all probably already knew that. I didn't know that because this is new to me. But anyway, he's raking out the next section where we're gonna let, let um, lay the next row down. And basically he's just trying to get ahead of me so that paper is down and I can be planning while he's doing um, other stuff so that I'm not, um, I had almost caught up to him. I did the whole row of peppers working on the row of tomatoes, but this will give me two rows ahead of him so that way I can keep planting while he's doing other stuff. So he's raking um, out and then we're gonna lay another row down. Okay, y'all, so we got two additional rows of black paper down. So that is four rows. I probably have enough for half of a row, um, but I do have some more paper coming on the way. But right now I have like a half a row, but that's plenty fine because that's two rows, two and a half rows still that I have left to plant. Um, so what you didn't see on video was I started planting some of the tomatoes and y'all my tomatoes literally look like trees let me show you one this one let's see this is not one but this is a good representation yeah here's a sun gold tomato y'all see how big that is i'm backing up do you see how 
big that is. Well, I had tomatoes in these blue things right here. So you can imagine, like, this is the size of this one and this one. So you can imagine what they look like in here. They look like trees, y'all. And so um, we had to, it was hard to dig a deep hole for those tomatoes. So my husband got me like a drill bit or something that he attached to his drill, almost like a little mini auger. So he helped me like dig the holes deeper for those that were in those big blue pots. So those eight of those, the rest of the tomatoes I think are in smaller pots like these. So it'll be much easier to dig a hole to fit, you know, the, the kind of the circum so circumference of the tomato. So that's kind of the next step is to plant the royal tomatoes and then start planting the other stuff. I've um, conferred with my crop plan um, to see what's beside the tomatoes and beside the tomatoes are going to be purple whole peas. Um, and then beside that, I think is okra and eggplant, but I think I'm going to switch that up to squash because the spacing that I have there is going to be perfect for squash. So we are making progress. Um, and I inserted, I'm going to insert a shot of just kind of how things are looking in the tunnel in terms of all the, the stuff that I still have to plant on my table. Let me insert that here so you can take a, a glimpse. Okay, guys, you can see my table is still covered. When this table is clear, let me tell you, that is a sign that I have everything planted. I don't know when that's going to be, but it's going to be soon. It is going to be soon. My goal is to have it all planted within the next week. That is the goal. That is the plan. Um, it's amazing to me how it is mid-March and I still have this much stuff left on my table. Mid-May. Oh, <laughs> my husband just corrected me. It is mid-May. It's mid-May and I still have all this stuff on my table. And I walk into my tunnel and you know, I've been loving, you know, seeing all my plants like a nursery. Just makes me happy. But when I walk in now, it just represents, it's like you're screaming at me. You're behind be stressed, be overwhelmed. Like it's talking to me y'all, <sighs> but I'm going to encourage you as I encourage myself. We can only do what we can do. And every minute that we spend, whether it's 30 minutes, whether we have a spot of two hours, whatever it is, we are further ahead than when we were when we didn't spend that time, right? Um, so I just want to encourage you as I encourage myself. This is the part of the gardening season that for me is a bit overwhelming because it's the planting part. Once the stuff is planted, to me, it's a little bit easier and easier in a different way. Meaning, yes, it's full of harvest. You're harvesting every day. You're preserving. You're washing. You're storing. It's definitely busy. Um, but to me, this is, I'm not going to say the more time consuming. This is just a part of the gardening journey that for me feels more overwhelming sometimes than the harvesting piece just because you got to get it in the ground right it can only survive in these pots for so long and you have a, a a time a window of time to get it in once it's in the ground then you start the next clock of your stress you start the next clock of your of your worrying and things like that and i guess if you think about it um when it comes to gardening because i was thinking about this over the last 24 hours and thinking about how busy the season, um, my life, the season I'm in right now, it's a busy season with work, with personal, with business, with the garden. And I was talking to my husband, I was like, what can I take off my plate? And I arrived at a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> I arrived at a whole lot of nothing of what I can take off my plate, except maybe make my garden smaller. This brings me so much joy. Is it necessary for me to grow this big? It is absolutely not necessary for me to grow this big, not to feed my family, especially the more that I learn on how to garden, how to garden efficiently and how to produce a great yield. Do I need all of this to produce for my family? No, I do not. 
right? And so I had to be honest with myself about that. Um, and you have to remember why you're doing what you're doing. Um, and maybe this is just for me or maybe it's for, for one of you. You have to remember why you're doing what you're doing because that's what's going to keep you going. Because when you're out here in the hot sun and you still have dishes piled up in your sink in the house, or when you're out here in the hot sun and you have other stuff that demands your attention, when you're out here in the hot sun and you'd rather be kicked up on the couch drinking you a cold glass of lemonade, it's only the why that's going to keep you going. It's only the end goal that's going to keep you going. And in terms of my why, I'm learning how to grow food so that we can be um, sustainable, so that we can not rely on the grocery store, because I feel like that's what God has asked us to do. Um, and that's why I'm doing it. And so I can make it smaller, but I can't stop, right? I can't stop. I have to grow food because I know for me, that is what the Lord has asked us to do. He has asked us to to do that and we need to be prepared and we need to be able to be able to sustain ourselves without relying on the grocery store. And y'all, it just tastes so much better, okay? It tastes so much better. Um, and so I want to just, I guess on this video, encourage you that we are just now beginning the, the like we're ramping up to the real gardening season, right? Um, most of everyone right now, you know, I would think, in your zone, it's about time to start planting. If not, you might have a couple of more weeks. But for the for the most part, a lot of us, our last frost has passed. We are moving from seedlings to planting and transplanting and direct sowing in the ground. That's the season that we're in. Um, and it's only gonna get more busy from here. Um, and so I wanna encourage you as I encourage myself is that in this season, in this moment, do what you can do block off the time that you can block off. If you only have 30 minutes, take the 30 minutes, plant something, transplant something, harvest something, start something. Um, do what you can while you can. And then second of all, be encouraged. Remember why you're doing what you're doing. And if your motives and your intentions are not right, then readjust, right? So um, if you're like, man, I'm growing all this food, but I really don't need it. It's just me and I'm not trying to sell. Then maybe you need to readjust your plan. But if you're like, hey, no, this is what I'm doing. This is a second income for me, or this is a way for me to do X, Y, and Z. Just know why you're doing what you're doing, right? And take it one step at a time. I always say this is a journey, and I don't say it by happenstance. I say it because it's true that you're never going to arrive at the designated place you're not gonna arrive at all your crops succeed and none fail. You're not gonna arrive at a place where there's absolutely no pests and that it's just easy breezy. But as you keep going, you learn stuff along the way. As you keep going, you get better and better and better. And let's fast forward 30 more days from now when you're picking the first tomato to put on your sandwich and you bite into it and you know it tastes so good and then you know that you can't get that at your local Publix. It's all worth it, right? Or when you have a friend who's in need of help, who maybe is a single parent who doesn't have food and you can provide food from your garden and it doesn't even, like you, you don't even have to blink. Like you don't have to worry like, oh my God, can I only give her five tomatoes? You can give her as many as you want because you know you're gonna have more and you know that you have a, a bountiful harvest, right? That's what it comes down to. So keep pressing, keep going, don't stop, be encouraged. So today, we got two more rows of paper down. Would I have liked to get seven, you know, five rows and get the whole garden? Yes, but today we have two rows of paper down and those rows are not even planted. So I still got work to do. So instead of me focusing on what I don't have, let me focus on what I do have. Let me focus on the time that I have. Let me be encouraged to keep going. And I want you to be encouraged to keep going. Remember, it's a journey. Let's grow together. I'll see you next time, friend.